Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and this is your place for professional video production techniques. The subject of this reveal, Breaking Down the Lumetri Color Panel, Part 3. All right, as I said in part one and two, I'm taking each one of the components or, or the categories in Lumetri color panel and breaking them down. You would not necessarily have to work this way. I think it's just easier to understand. Okay, this particular one is curves and there's two, type, two types of curves, the RGB curves and the hue saturation curve. This is similar to what's in a speed grade with uh, some added uh, goodness inside. Let's go have a look. So in this example here, let's just uh, talk about regular curves. So this is a Luma curve and you can see at the top, I can be affecting just the luminosity or the black and white value or the red or the green or the blue. And I could go and, and push the green any way I want. And you'd see that, um, that actually that indicator stays there so I can see that, that change. All right, when you're adding points in here, um, they show up simply by clicking on them. When you want to delete them, hold the control key on uh, Windows, the command on Mac and click and get rid of them. And you could do a typical thing like add a little S curve in there. What you can do that's different from speed grade is you can actually pull these all the way down. So we can do the typical things that a curve user would want to do when pulling this and moving this all around. So generally speaking, what Adobe has done throughout the Lumetri color panel is they've given you changes that are pleasing. For instance, the contrast slider will never push something to super white or black. But you can see here the curves will allow you to do that. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Almost all of the controls are there to make quick, pleasing changes, good quality changes. So don't, don't uh, uh, discount them as, you know, amateur changes. They're very powerful. They're tuned to what editors want. But if you need to go beyond that, the big old curves can do that and slam it down. Now I'll come back and, and talk to you why these curves are different from the uh, typical RGB curves uh, in uh, Premiere Pro in a second. You'll notice that below that we have our saturation curves and typically the way that these hue sat curves work in other programs um, is that they work in a long bar and that's okay. The problem with taking color which is represented in a circle and putting it in a bar is where do you cut that bar and does the red end here and the red begin there? Where do you mix that up? When you put the color in a circle that means that you have easy control now of the hue saturation. If you look at the way that this is broken up, there's a center line and there's some lines in between here and that tells you you haven't influenced the saturation at all in this area. Over here, the saturation is pushed into the green. So as I move it up, you'll see the green increase. If I move it below those uh, marks, it will decrease. I've already allocated where the uh, dresses are and you can see I can add or remove saturation to those dresses all done without any secondaries at all this is very important now if you wanted to to add more to this i could push this up and then push this over and you can see that i'm going to be influencing more of the magentas over there or more of the yellow inside okay so that's pretty cool but have a look at this example here where we've got the girl walking her dog if i turn off my edit you can see she's actually wearing a purple shirt and the dog is less saturated. And you can see down here what I've done is I've identified the purple area and just pulled that down to no saturation. So there's the hue sat curves working like a champion. And the same here with the dog, I've pushed the dog and you can see there's a bit of that in the trees in the background too. And if I really needed to, I could uh, draw a mask over the dog and just be adding that saturation to the dog. All right, now uh, over here with our building, if we wanted to add more punch to the sky, we can use the use that curves for that. So you can see down here it's wispy and there and I'm pumping that up. So if I hit before and after, that's before, that's after. So really useful there. I also wanna point out down to the bottom. So if I don't have any of these, so again, I'm holding down the control key or command key and clicking, I can help identify the primary. So there is the blues right there and I can pull that up. And back over in here, again, 
instead of using a secondary, I'm pushing the skin tone either more or less saturated. But back up here in the RGB curve, so I want to show you something that is really powerful. And to do that, I'm going to uh, take this particular clip, which is being affected with my RGB curves, um, the effect itself. So I've, I've added RGB curves to this clip and the Lumetri color panel uh, curves to this one. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over to my source and I'm actually looking at the same timeline in both um, in, in the source window and here I am over in the uh, program window and I want you to look at something really quite remarkable here. I'm going to bring over my I'm going to bring my vector scope over here so you can see saturation. All right. So if we look at this, this is the RGB curves. You can see there's an enormous amount of saturation spilling over here. In this example, using the uh, Lumetri RGB curves, you can see there's less saturation. You can see over here, more saturation, less saturation. And I've essentially mimicked the same curve move in here to really take this down, really crush the blacks. And what this points out is that the RGB curves in the Lumetri color panel are affecting luminosity and not the chrominance, not the red, green, and blue. The RGB curves that are typically inside um, that I'm using over on this side from Premiere Pro, they do both. They do all of it. So red, green, and blue and the luminosity. So I constantly, if I push the contrast, I have to pull the saturation down add the contrast, pull the saturation down. This is extremely important. First of all, if you don't even know that this is a problem, then just be happy that any edits you make in the Lumetri color panel will not push the, the, uh, um, the saturation where you don't want it. Very nice. But if you come from the old school where you knew, you push the contrast, you pull down the saturation, this is just one less pain in the ass job you never have to worry about. That's why when Adobe made the Lumetri color panel, they thought ahead. They thought about these smart ways to work. Hey, people are going to want to bo uh, boost the contrast. If you want the saturation, then add the saturation. But here it's obvious I don't need that. Whew. All right, so hopefully you found this informative. If you have, then please uh, click on the subscribe button to video reveal. If you're not already an Adobe Creative Cloud user, then down in the description is a URL specially for you to get your free 30-day trial. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you looking your best.